Hey guys, Rosemarie here with another video for you guys. This one is actually going to be a continuation of my last video, which was washing and conditioning human hair wigs and toppers. You've washed your human hair wig or topper, and the next step in the process is going to be to get it completely dry and ready for styling. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, this is just a reminder for you guys, I washed this one this afternoon. This is a human hair piece and please, please, please make sure that you dry the wig on one of these plastic wig stands. The reason why is because you have this super delicate cap and you don't want to compromise it and stretch it out by going ahead and pinning it straight to a blockhead. So that's step number one and what I actually like to do is take a towel, put my little uh, stand in the wig there so that it just drips freely. You're going to want to dry it for about, I would say about three to four hours. Um, it's going to take to make sure that the cap is completely dry. Don't do anything to the wig until that cap is dry. The rest of the hair can still be damp, um, but making sure the cap is dry, again, I cannot stress this enough, is the most important Thing. Once you have your wig on the wig stand, it's um, mostly, it's completely dry in the cap, mostly dry in the hair. What you can do is take the wig off and then move it to a blockhead. So the blockhead looks like this. You can buy them online, but it's basically a canvas head that you'll pin your wig to using these neat little things called T-pins. Ah, there we go. So you can get these super cheap online. They usually come in a box of like a million and I just filled some. And I talked in my last video about tips and tricks to make sure that you're pinning your wig properly. Um, this is a time when you can really damage your wig if you don't know how to pin it to the blockhead the right way. Now just to kind of reiterate what I said in my last video, I'm going to show you this wig, the inside of this wig cap so you have an idea of where to pin. So you're going to want to pin, this is the ear tab, you're going to want to place a pin at the top and at the bottom, top and bottom of the ear tab. And then you'll also want to pin, this is the nape area, one on either side, being extremely careful not to pin where these um, little Velcro tabs are on the wig. You don't want to compromise those because then the wig is no longer adjustable. So um, absolutely no pinning through this base material here, especially through the lace front. Um, this is a very delicate piece. This particular wig is hand tied. It's made by John Renault. Um, absolutely gorgeous, but um, you want to treat it like a very expensive piece of lingerie, for instance. The more natural something looks, the more delicate that it is. The fact that you don't have your, you know, you don't have ears on a blockhead to determine whether or not the wig is straight, um, a good rule of thumb is to go by the seams. If you look closely at this blockhead, it's got seams on it. And so you'll wanna line it up properly, especially if you have a topper. Now, if you have a topper, you're gonna to wanna to pin through the actual clips themselves. And so that's a neat way to do it so that you don't damage the integrity of the cap. So once you have your wig pinned to your blockhead using the T-pins, here's a couple products that I suggest for you to try out. You're going to want to use some sort of uh, product to help smooth the hair out, to make sure that it's nice and glossy, to use a product that protects against UV rays. One of my favorite products for this is the John Renault Blown Away Blow Dry Balm. It's a great product. Something like this is really going to help you in terms of protecting your piece and making sure that um, the color remains true for as long as possible. You'll want to use for a wig of this length, this is a medium length wig, you'll want to use about 
I would say a nickel or a dime sized amount in the palm of your hand and then you'll want to work it through your hands really well and make sure you focus on the ends and just work it through the whole entire piece. For something longer, for instance, um, a John Renault Blake, here is my beautiful Blake from John Renault, and as you can see, she is extremely long. For a wig of this length, you're going to want to use about a quarter size dollop on your hands. Make sure you work it through the hair, but don't put it on the cap itself. The nice thing about a product like this is that it's very light. It's not going to weigh down the hair. It's not going to make it greasy or flat or sticky. So this is a really, really good product to help you smooth away that hair and just keep it from getting too frizzy. Now, most human hair wigs are going to get frizzy, especially you'll notice it after the first time you wash them. This wig out of the box was completely bone straight. Now, um, I can style her, I can curl her, but um, she's going to start to get frizzy here in a minute. So as she dries, she will get frizzy and that's okay. I'm going to show you how to get rid of the frizz. Now, um, the hair is pretty much dry as you're pinning it to the blockhead at that point. So you want to get a bottle of water and just section through and mist it just a little bit. If you have any areas on the wig itself where you're wanting to redirect um, the hair, for instance, let's say the hair naturally just falls in your face and you want to correct that problem in the wig, that's just a matter of changing the direction of the knots. You'll want to put a little bit of moisture, especially like for instance here on this wig. If this wig, this is a synthetic, but you get what I'm saying. So on this wig, let's say I took it out of the box and it was going like this all the time and it was bugging the crap out of me. I personally don't like hair in my face. So what I will do is spray, um, especially in here, just a little bit of that water, but don't get it too, too wet because that's just going to be more blow drying for you. I do want to talk about this. Some of you guys might think to yourselves, Oh, but why don't I just air dry the wig? Why do I need to go through all this trouble to like blow dry and everything? The difference between an air dry and a blow dry is totally different. Um, the hair is way more polished. It's less frizzy. It's glossy. It's straight. You have that UV protection from the blow dry balm. And when you have a human hair wig like this, the less frizzy it is, the less chance there is that your hair will actually get damaged over time. All that frizziness is just going to contribute to more knots, more damage, and the life of your wig will actually be shorter. And a very important key to blow drying the hair and I'll actually show you guys a technique. So this is video one of two. The second video, I'll actually do a demo for you guys. I will completely blow dry this wig here. I'll show you guys how it looks afterward, but I'll do it as like a time lapse so you can see me do the whole piece. And you'll see the before and after difference of it. Very important when you are blow drying these wigs, you'll wanna make sure that you get absolutely all humidity out of the hair. The reason why is because let's say you blow dry the wig and you don't go through it well enough, or your topper, and you wear it out, any little bit of humidity in the hair is going to react with the humidity in the air outside and so it's going to start to frizz up there's nothing better than like a really glossy smooth hairstyle to look polished and i know it seems like it's a pretty big investment of your time but if you really think about it you're only doing this once every six to eight washes once you get the hang of it you'll become really quick at it it'll only be once a week that you're really doing this if you wear the wig every day your piece will last way longer i also wanted to mention when the hair is wet like this you're going to want to be really really careful brushing it out the reason why is because hair human hair um, will stretch out the hair itself will stretch out and then it'll snap so you'll want to get yourself a good paddle brush use the paddle brush while it's wet once you get the wig pinned on your blockhead and you're sectioning it off piece by piece with the blow dryer, um, a great tool will be a round brush just like this. This one is actually from John Renault and so is the paddle brush. Once you have your wig pinned to your blockhead, you use your finger to kind of protect the, the lace front especially when you're using a brush like this. It can damage and catch on that lace and the base material. Be very, very careful as far as the cap 
goes. As you go through the process of blow drying the hair, you'll want to make sure that you're feeling for any excess moisture. As I mentioned before, any moisture that's left in the hair is going to react with the moisture outside and it's going to start to frizz up on you even though you just spent all this time blow drying. As you go through, touch the hair and feel for any humidity. If the hair feels slightly cool to the touch, then that's a sign that you really need to focus in and get the rest of that moisture out. You'll wanna do a really good job of focusing, especially on the ends of the hair, as opposed to here at the top, because this is the part of the hair that's oldest and it's gonna retain the most moisture. As you do your blow drying, you'll want medium, medium high heat. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a blow dryer that has a little director piece just like this. I picked this one up at Target. It was $30. It is the Infinity Pro by Conair and it's just a regular blow dryer. It also has a diffuser for curly styles. I'm going to show you this in the next video as I do a demo. Um, you're going to want to hold the brush and the director at a certain angle so that you're blowing down the cuticle of the hair versus against the cuticle because these hairs are actually looped into the cap and so you have a hair that's coming out of the other side. It's called a return. And so if you're focusing on the ends and going upward, you're actually going to kink out all those return pieces and you're going to um, not get that really smooth, silky look that you're looking for in your human hair piece. For a very smooth look kind of like this, you'll want to focus on using the paddle brush at the top when you're doing your blow drying. Any like nice volume at the crown or up top, I'm going to show you guys in the next video how to do that with your round brush and adjusting the direction to which you're blow drying the hair. As you blow dry the top of the wig, you'll also want to be very careful not to get too close to the base material and the cap. You'll want to get your round brush no closer than about an inch to the cap. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry if this video was like a little, you know, uh, haphazard because I'm not totally prepared. It's actually Christmas Eve and so I really really wanted to get this video out for you guys with the biggest tips and tricks for blow drying human hair and it's difficult for me. I don't know how to do the voiceover stuff yet but it's difficult for me to stand and blow dry the wig and then with the sound of the blow dryer talking over it for you guys. So I just figured I'd do this video, give you the tips and tricks and then in the next video Video, I'll show you my technique for blow drying your human hair wigs and toppers. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Um, if you want more videos like this, hit like. And if you want to see more videos from me, um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Instagram. My Instagram name is rosemarie underscore fit. Um, that page has some hair stuff, but it's got mostly like health and fitness related items. I do want to give a big thank you to John Renault for helping sponsor some of the products that I've shown in this video. I rely on wigs and John Renault has just always made a fantastic product. I'm really excited to share more of the care tips for you guys because of the fact that you buy these pieces, they're very expensive. You want to make them last, you want to take care of them. John Renault has been kind enough to teach me so that I can teach you guys. And of course, I always sprinkle in my own tips and tricks. Thank you, John Renault. You guys are awesome. And thank you guys for watching this video.